Lugansk, República Popular de Lugansk. Hemos hablado muchísimo sobre el paradero de las armas que desde la Unión Europea se han enviado a Ucrania. Muchos hemos sido los que hemos dicho que estas armas en la gran mayoría de ocasiones terminan en lugares muy peligrosos, sobre todo para nosotros los europeos. Pues bien, estoy aquí hoy para hablar con un analista internacional, Janusz Putkonen, de origen finlandés, que tiene mucha y muy importante información al respecto. Y es que los medios de comunicación occidentales recientemente sí han hablado sobre esta cuestión, no pueden ocultar la verdad durante más tiempo, de modo que ha sido precisamente Finlandia donde los oficiales de policía dicen que terminan algunas armas que nosotros desde la Unión Europea, que con nuestros impuestos se envían a Ucrania, pero hablan de grupos de crimen organizado, cuando la realidad, según Janos Putkonen, es mucho, mucho más peligrosa. Hello. Hello. I'm a Finnish journalist, uh, chief editor and, and director Janos Putkonen, um, already covering the, the civil war in Ukraine for over seven years uh, in Donbass region and uh, of course the geopolitical events in, in around Ukraine. So recently we have seen that the mass media, the Western media, um, have spoken about the weapons we sent to Ukraine from Europe that, and in Finland. What do you know about that? Yeah, uh, the, actually the problem came up very early stage in the, when the intervention of the Russian forces uh, happened in, uh, in March. Uh, the problem of the black market weapons and uh, it was very fast visible that these weapons are not ending up to the troops where they are meant to go and what was the uh, like a public plan or or the plan of, of certain officials uh, what happened uh, where the uh, the weapons started to disappear uh, has been a, a big question for the past half year and uh, Of course, we, we saw traces that, that these weapons are ending up to the black markets and to, to different kind of groups around the world. Uh, and uh, now we are in the face that the Western officials, like Finnish poli police chiefs, they are admitting that these uh, black market weapons are ending up to the countries like Finland, Sweden, uh, Denmark, Norway. And, uh, information what they give is a very partial information about the whole scheme what's going on yeah, because they say that these uh, european weapons um, normally end up in some kind of criminal organizations kind of not that big criminal organizations in finland uh, do you have any information about um, if this is true or not uh, no certainly those weapons end up to the criminal hands that is that is for sure but which kind of criminal hands uh, uh, the police is willing to talk about organized crime uh, and uh, and mentioning motorcycle clubs uh, and admitting that these are the organizations which are running the traffic schemes uh, we know that for decades and decades uh, organized crime Units has created networks of trafficking all kind of stuff from from narcotics uh, to to steroids, uh, weapons, hu even humans, uh, and uh, that's their business. That's why they are for. But uh, these these um, organized criminal gangs they have weapons as much as they want f over their own use and needs. And uh, the qu real question is that from um, to where they need uh, military-grade weapons. As, uh, of course, in the past they could buy military-grade weapons from the world black markets as much as they want, but civilian cr criminals doesn't do that. They don't use uh, military-grade weapons in, in civilian crimes. Why not? Uh, because every military weapon has its own fingerprint. Every military weapon can be traced from its uh, steps from the very core. And uh, if, if you use um, a military weapon in a crime, it's a very possible that you will get caught. And, uh, and you will get all uh, military intelligence uh, behind you, all possible uh, forces, 
and uh, doing a crime with the weapon which make you a risk doesn't have any sense that's why uh, these crime gangs they use weapons which are most difficult to trace to, to its owners or previous owners and and that's why they are using unmarked civilian weapons and uh, and and also i think that there is not spoken law between the government officials and criminal organizations that military grade weapons should not be used in any way and that's why we don't see them used now they say that exactly these uh, uh, decades old uh, criminal organizations are buying military grade weapons why what sense they have to what uh, motorcycle club will do with javelin missiles or or assault rifles and that is of course something what they are not willing to answer so are we talking about the fact that the western media are trying to hide the bigger picture offering us a smaller picture of this um, criminal exactly. organizations exactly uh, you know that uh, nato has a very long history with the cia in the operation uh, gladio what happened in the western uh, europe where extremist militants were armed with the military grade bombs and weapons and uh, uh, those times uh, communists uh, extremist forces were used to destabilize the governments in europe to keep them in tight hand of the of the uh, western powers and and the powers above the powers let's call it deep state and uh, what we see now here is that uh, these military grade weapons um, are going out from Ukraine and to where? The question is who are buying these weapons? Who are needing these weapons? And uh, the truth is that that um, the scheme is played out uh, blaming those who are trafficking is just a scratch of the surface because it means that they have find markets to these weapons. They have systems, they have because officials cannot directly be involved in trafficking so it's better to let the organized crime to do the spreading of the weapons but where are the markets why they are doing it uh, what we see and witness now in countries like Finland is those A's of militants extremist uh, nationalist militants gathering to different kind of groups they are quite open they have even political new political parties uh, for in in the uh, sphere of Azov battalions. And many of these uh, participants in these groups, they have been fighting for months in the Ukrainian um, nationalist battalions, and, and there are uh, lots of people directly involved in, in the uh, Ukrainian nationalist, um, uh, let's say, uh, national guard, what, what, what is said. And uh, they are interested, especially from the military grade weapons, because they are uh, educated to use them, they are used to use them, and they want to organize themselves as milita militant military groups, as their um, um, like icon, like the Azov battalion is. They want to create Azov kind of battalions to different countries now, and that is their main purpose. So, so there are a few things what we need to look on. The things what are not told. Uh, when the highest uh, police chiefs in Finland say that, that uh, yes, we witness uh, this flow of weapons to the cr criminals, why we don't see any raids, why we don't see any confiscation of these weapons, why we are not seeing anything, uh, factive results of trying to, at least trying to prevent this happening because it would reveal the markets where these weapons are ending up who are interested to buy these weapons from these uh, crime syndicates and uh, and uh, that's why this is very very threatening uh, scenario what is going up in countries like finland sweden norway and denmark and baltics because because uh, we see that this kind of operation gladio 2.0 is taking place and which would be the consequences for Europe? Uh, it's very easy to see that uh, the NATO has a very big problem with their narrative. Uh, the, now, 
From the beginning of the uh, Russian military intervention and escalation of the Ukrainian civil war to the scale where it is today, uh, the, the globalist governments, the socialist, so-called socialist governments, have had quite strong backing together with the mainstream media propaganda, uh, the NATO agenda, and uh, the pub turn to public support for arming Ukraine, uh, waging a war to the last Ukrainian as they are doing right now. Uh, but the problem is that the narrative is lost because the truth is not in their side. So the socialist government is facing a, a widening pressure, especially now when the real consequences of the, the conflict in Ukraine is starting to take place, like uh, losing heating, losing energy supplies, losing, uh, uh, facing a terrible inflation. People are asking hard questions. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And more and more, these globalists who, who have uh, go, go to this NATO agenda with strong belief that it's a good thing. They are starting to make questions more and more and more. So the problem is that this, this globalist government are in a very, very weakening position. Only with ones who are blindly uh, uh, following this NATO agenda are the nationalists, the extremist elements of the nationalists, because they don't listen any common sense. It's always uh, impossible to talk with the people which extremists believe. And, and in here, the NATO steps in, because uh, arming uh, the extremist militants gives them a possibility to raise a weapon to the head of the Western governments, the socialist, globalist governments, that if you don't follow our rule, our agenda, our narrative, no matter what, if you start to make uh, like uh, steps back in the Ukraine, uh, pro-Ukraine agenda, we will raise these nationalists to challenge your government. And we will start to destabilize your countries. And you will see the consequences of that. So uh, they, in, in the Operation Gladio, they used communist militants. Now they are using nationalist militants. And, and they can be very useful for the uh, multinational power in order to keep local governments in control because they are fearing for their lives, actually, that, that if they uh, um, doesn't keep strong support for Ukraine, if they are not yelling Slava Ukraina in every second word, then these nationalists will make a physical revenge in their own home countries. And, and uh, this is very useful for the intelligence services to operate against legal governments. And, uh, of course, as we saw in the Ukraine in 2014, these militants can be used to overthrow governments. And, and uh, if, if the socialist government, like places like in Norway, Finland or other, are seriously losing their momentum, in order to keep the NATO agenda, they can make a coup. And they have the weapons and troops to do it. So we could even leave Ukraine 2.0, for example, in Finland? Especially. That, that there is a political uh, background now going on. They have the, the uh, Finnish Svoboda or already built. They have already uh, uh, the black and red uh, um, uh, 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 extremist wing parties uh, which are directly uh, bringing up uh, the right sector movement in Finland and, and they don't even try to, to uh, close these parties and movement but no just the opposite they are boosting them up and uh, Ukrainian militants are frequently visiting Finland and giving their lecture and, and guys there are 70 fighters in the Ukrainian nationalist battalions at the very moment. So, so we have a serious problem growing up and government is do doing nothing in order to prevent these Nazis rising to power.